I, I've actually been given an impossible assignment, and that is to summarize and synthesize and give you the key takeaways from all the discussion that's occurred to date, and do that all in five minutes, so this is crazy. I'm going to do two, three things. One is just talk about what I think is one of the core themes, if you will, a meta theme that has emerged in the discussion. And then I'm going to talk about some of the less prominent um, elements that uh, perhaps deserve a little more attention and finish on why I think those less prominent elements are, more impor are, are very important. So if I th think about all the rich discussion we've had so far, the uh, core theme around it has been the notion of movement versus position. I don't think it's an accident that the three amigos who organized all this uh, call it a movement rather than a perspective or a point of view. There's a very strong bias for action um, and movement. Uh, dynamic versus static, trajectories versus structure, optimism versus pessimism, risk-taking versus risk-averseness. And within that context, I think it's quite natural, therefore, to focus on technology and uh, the e economics, the economy, uh, because those are deeply dynamic domains in practice. Although, ironically, when you learn about them in school, they tend to be presented in much more static forms, and the dynamism is actually lost in a lot of that presentation. In all of this, though, I think there's been a missing or less emphasized element, and I really want to draw on that. And to do that, I want to draw on Brian Arthur's uh, marvelous uh, description yesterday of this underground neural layer that's emerging and suggest that there's actually a third layer that actually uh, needs some attention as well, operating under the surface. It needs to be exposed, it needs to be understood, it needs to be embraced, and most importantly, it needs to be amplified. And that has to do with the notion of, uh, triggered by Eric Schmidt's observation that we have uh, at the current time about five exabytes of data floating around every two days. Um, I, uh, there's obviously huge opportunity in that five exabytes of data, but I think it's also extremely dangerous. And the reason I think it's extremely dangerous is because it distracts us from something else which is the whole notion of tacit knowledge, which really hasn't come up yet in the course of this conversation, uh, and which I think is actually extremely important, that if we're going to have the kind of progress that we're all looking for, we have to figure out ways to uh, understand that tacit knowledge and to build that tacit knowledge much more rapidly. Um, it has to do with the knowledge that we have a very hard time expressing. It's in our heads. Uh, it is more about the how as opposed to the what or the why. Um, it has to do with the notion of being very context-specific, deeply embedded in context, um, and therefore very hard to abstract out, put on the web, and transmit across the internet. And yet deeply important in terms of driving the evolution of both technology and economic systems. And if you think about tacit knowledge as being extremely important, it leads to a, third, a second element which has to do with trust-based relationships. Tacit knowledge cannot be accessed, and it certainly has a very hard time being built in the absence of trust-based relationships. And we've touched on that a bit, but I think there's a lot more opportunity to really dive deeply into trust-based relationships, uh, and that the fact that it, those are not just becoming desirable, but are actually becoming an imperative. Uh, and then that leads to a third element, which is if you have that tacit knowledge amplified by trust-based relationships, you get talent development. And uh, most of the time when we've talked about talent development and skills in the course of this discussion, we've tended to fall back immediately to educational systems. And while I think those are certainly important, uh, that's much more the domain of explicit knowledge. I think the real opportunity is how do you foster talent development on the job as a lifetime endeavor, and that becomes critical to, again, driving technology and economic development. So why is this important? I think there's one element of importance which has to do with simply the, um, the ability to drive technology and economic development more rapidly. I think there's another element which is, it has to do with another movement that's in play around the world today. It hasn't been talked about very much. It's one of the most profound demographic changes that we're all experiencing, which has to do with the growth of religious fundamentalism in all its forms, uh, both domestic and foreign and uh, related worldviews. Now we have three options when we think about that movement. Uh, one is to dismiss it, treat it as a bunch of idiots, irrelevant. Uh, the second is to oppose it. And then the third option is to engage with it. 
Uh, and I would ar argue that we actually have an opportunity to engage with it if we understand what's driving it. And I would say there are three elements driving it. One is a, the, everybody is experiencing mounting pressure. Uh, one of the dark sides of the taconomy is that we cannot stand still. If we don't move faster, we will not stay in the same place, much less advance. And so uh, there is mounting pressure that everybody feels. There's an erosion of stability that everyone feels. Nothing, you can't seem to depend on anything. Everything's in flux, everything's changing. And there's an erosion of relationships. We're moving to a world of transactions where virtually everything, if not everything, can be bought and sold, perhaps with the exception of tacit knowledge. Um, and I think by giving more prominence to these three uh, T's, the, uh, the notion of tacit knowledge, trust-based relationships, and talent development, uh, we start to create the possibility to engage and involve with these people, these, the people in this other movement, uh, and evolve our own points of view and perspectives. I think there is a paradox embedded in all of this, which is that the sustainable movement that we're all looking for actually does require stability, elements of stability in order to be sustainable. And being thoughtful about what those elements of stability are and fostering those at the same time that we have huge change, I think is going to be the big, um, the big opportunity. I just want to conclude by saying I am a taconomist, if that's not clear, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to the discussion as we go forward. Thank you very much.